you can choose a life of ease and comfort, or you can choose a life of service and adventure. Which one of those, when you're 90 years old, are you going to be more proud of? No matter how good we are, we can still be better. You can always be better. Customers have a divine discontent and they teach you if you listen to customers. So we watch for that, we see patterns, and we can find places where it's not working, something's going wrong, and that's really how I get the feedback is from customer input. Uh, and often, you know, in all caps, angry, you ruined my child's birthday because the gift didn't show up on time. And we take that, and what you really want to do is you take that, it's an anecdote, it's a single example, but you need to find the root cause what went wrong deep inside the system? How did this happen? Because then you can fix it for everyone. So that, that particular problem will never happen again. You don't just fix the symptom, you have to fix the root cause. And that's been the secret to our operational success for 20 years. There are a lot of things that are a waste of time. You know, when you think about your life, I think, I, I often tell people uh, that I work with, if you can get, because people, people have very high standards for, how they want their work life to be. And, uh, and I said, look, if you can get your work life to be where you enjoy half of it, that is, a home, that is amazing. Because very few people ever achieve that. Because the truth is, everything comes with overhead. That's reality. Everything comes with pieces that you don't like. You could be a Supreme Court justice and there's still gonna be pieces of your job you don't like. You can be a university professor and still going to be, you have to go to committee meetings and you have to do things, you know, there, every job comes with pieces you don't like. And we need to say, that's just how, that's part of it. Uh, and, and, and not resent those pieces or try not to, uh, but also try to minimize them. I tell senior executives, you should have the least stress. You know, there's this weird, I think, false, uh, idea that CEOs, I'm a CEO, there's this false idea that CEOs are under the most stress. Well, I look at that, I'm like, why? You're in charge. Why don't you delegate the stress? It's your choice. And uh, so it's, you have to figure out how to set up your life in such a way that you can minimize the things. And I find people don't dislike hard work. What people dislike is being um, out of control. Like they can't control their life. They can't control their environment. This happens to me when I get overscheduled. I hate being overscheduled. I want some time to be able to think and free myself. We all have the same amount of time in the world. Nobody has more time than anybody else. And when you become a very successful person, one of the things you start to get overscheduled. You have this event. You had to agree to do this. And maybe last night you were like, why did I agree to do this? I have to go on stage tomorrow. I wish I were really with my family. And you know, or I hope maybe not in this case, let's say that you like this one. But in general, that kind of thing happens. And so you have to guard your time and, um, and, and try to stay a little bit flexible. So that's, for me, it's not a waste of time but I like to have some freedom of movement uh, uh, rather than having every minute of every day scheduled. So a young person starting their career, uh, I think there are probably a lot of things. Some of them are very well known and people have heard them many times, they're still true. One of those that you should always focus on a young person should find something that they're passionate about to do. And um, that's not going to surprise anyone. It's, it's a clear thing to do. It's very hard. If you don't love your work, you're never going to be great at it. Um, I think the other thing I would suggest to uh, any young person, uh, even before they start their career, is to really think about their choices. Because I find Young people, and I, I, when I was young, I, had, I made this mistake too. You can get very fixed on your gifts. So everybody has gifts. You know, you, you have gifts and you have things that you didn't get gifted. Maybe you're 
extremely beautiful, maybe you're extremely good at mathematics, maybe you, there are a lot of things that you can be given, but those things can confuse you because they're not the things that construct your life, it's your choices that construct your life, not your gifts. You can celebrate your gifts, be proud of them, be happy of them, actually don't be proud of them, be, be celebratory of them, but you can't be proud because they're gifts, they were given to you, you didn't earn them. You can only be proud of the things you earn. And so, as I got older, I started to realize I wasn't proud of my gifts. I was always good at school. School was always easy for me. And I was always proud that I was a great student. I got A's in all my classes. I was good at math, all of that. And I thought, I thought that's who I was, but it's not true. Those are the things that are gifts. What was hard for me is deciding to work hard, deciding to use my gifts in certain ways to challenge myself to uh, do things that I didn't think I could do, to put myself in uncomfortable situations. We all get, I would say to a young person, you can choose a life of ease and comfort, or you can choose a life of service and adventure. Which one of those, when you're 90 years old, are you going to be more proud of?